so basically there is a, a new ID uh, starting to evolve here that hypnosis is a way of communicating with the unconscious mind. Yes. Hypnosis is also a state of mind. Yes. Let's say uh, a theta or a deep alpha state. Yeah. Uh, and states you can see when people have their eyes closed and right. they are listening to the hypnotist. So we have, and we have um, hypnosis. Uh, basically, hypnosis can be spread it out in those right. two big directions, right? A way right. of communicating. People have their eyes open. And you will never, unless you know what you're looking for, when you see someone in a conversational trance, most people will have no idea it's happening. And it'll, the way to look to, to the to average person in the outside world looking in is these two people are having a really intimate conversation, a really intense conversation. Maybe one person's talking, and everyone's sitting there just fascinated. It happens every day. Yeah. What people don't realize is that there's a hypnotic context starting to be created, that the, the person speaking has, should we say, undue influence over their audience at that point. Yeah. It's not a bad thing, it's, it happens every day. It's, it's a good thing, provided the messages are positive, they're healthy, they're life-affirming, shall we say. Yeah. Um, so yeah, can you do hypnosis with people drooling in their sleep and so on? Of course you can, it's wonderful. Yeah. And there's a different style, one where the processes are, are speeding up, where stuff is happening, where they're not aware of all the stuff that's happening, all they're aware of is like, something good's going on, I'm not quite sure what it is, you know what I mean? Yeah, actually, so it's a state of fascination and concentration. Yeah, yeah exactly. Okay, great. I mean, think of it this way, as you say, we're beautiful Los Cabos right now, there's a uh, seaside, there's rocks you can go diving off and so on. So, yes. you can imagine someone um, going out to one of those rocks in the middle of the ocean, uh, you know, first thing in the morning, climbing up there, and just as they get to the top, the sun rises, and they're just sitting there looking at it and going, this is an amazing moment. What they've just experienced is a trance process. Okay. Now, just because you know someone wasn't talking to them at the time, doesn't mean hypnosis isn't occurring. But you can yeah. say God's talking to them at that point, right? <laughs> yeah, it is a beautiful uh, metaphor. So uh, the last, uh, let's say, twenty years with the development of, um, uh, let's say, Ericksonian Irigno, Irigno, hypnosis mm -hmm. became more popular, also yeah. because of the Milton model in NLP. Absolutely, and. Um, a lot of stuff is happening in hypnosis also because of you. And um, is, could you say that there are like thousands of people on the planet now basically uh, doing uh, the work of Milton Erickson, right? So is it, is, it, is, it, is it so that when Milton Erickson would be alive today, yeah. would he be proud on, on the work and quality that, uh, for example, many NLPers show and sure. demonstrate and a lot of uh, hypnotherapists show? I think it's a thorny question. Erickson was a genius, and what he did was amazing. Um, and it's going to be anyone's guess how he would be where he alive today, because, you know, with 20 years, or more, actually 30 years since he's died, and he was a, you know, he's a creature of his times. He was born in the, in 1901 or something like that. So, you know, he had a much more um, reserved attitude towards things. So, for example, the Erickson Foundation to this day will not teach their particular materials or release any of the videos they have of Erickson to anyone who's not a medical doctor or a nurse or psychiatrist or, or clinical psychologist or a PhD in some social science, thinking that somehow you have to have this superior background to be a better person so you're allowed to have these skills. Yeah. That's an attitude from the 1950s really where the, you know, the doctor knows best yeah. and the average person you have to come to the doctor for a quick favor. I think society's moved on from that, right? So, if Erickson was time warping today, I think he'd be a little bit shocked. Not because of necessarily, I mean, there are, of course, different levels of quality, right? And some people think they're doing Erickson hypnosis, but really, they're not. But I think we'd be shocked at it, how many people are, are influenced by his work. And um, provided he would overcome that shock, I mean, he's a, he was a great personality, I'm sure he could have done a lot of personal change. I, I'm pretty sure he would see through those social you know, constructs that we have nowadays. And I would hope that he would see through to the, the great work that's being done. So many people healing so much more quickly, being a force for good in the world, so much pain being removed that needn't be there, that you know, I'd hope to say that he'd come around and look at it and go, you know what, it's not what I expected, but uh, actually might even be better than I thought it would be. Yeah. Because the word's getting out that people are doing the work and people are being healed by it. Yeah. Okay, what, what actually makes... Uh a good hypnotherapist, how, how can people be 
a great hypnotherapist, and I mean in the frame of getting results. Sure. Um, uh, ironically, I'm going to give you a counterintuitive answer. Um, the more you want a result, the harder it is to get. Okay. It's called the law of reverse effect. You see, it's kind of like you know, you're playing a sport and someone kicks the ball at you, and you're trying really hard. It's a slow ball. It should be easy. You're trying really hard to kind of block it, but you miss. All right. It's because your conscious mind is taking over a process that should be run unconsciously. Your body is being run by your unconscious mind. And to the extent that you interfere, the wrong part of the brain is trying to do the wrong task, task it wasn't designed to do, and so it becomes sloppy, awkward, and so on. So if people really, really, really want the result, they get so attached to it, it's the wrong part of the brain trying to take over the result, and it becomes unnatural. Right? Right. So the biggest key is the idea of how can you develop this naturalness in your communication, so you catch moments as they arise, help transform them, and then set them back in again, okay. rather than trying to drag them out of the person, switch them around, and force them back inside. So for some people that works great, uh, you know, and for a lot of people, if you do your work elegantly, they'll accept that, and it's, it's a, you know, valid, a valuable modality. But it's a lot easier when you trust your unconscious, let it do the work. Of course, you need some experiences, and reference experience, and training, and, and some tools to allow the unconscious mind to work through. And then all you have to do consciously is just be with another person. You have to respect them as a person. You have to be able to um, appreciate them as a person. There's a great quote, which I think was, um, I think Stephen Gillick can this, I'm not sure. But basically, he said, your job as a hypnotherapist is to pay attention to that part of the client that they're disowning, that they think is bad, is evil, they wish they could just destroy. And appreciate that part of the client long enough for them to develop a new relationship to it, so they can start appreciating it too. And that's where the healing comes through. Yeah. Okay. You know the old saying: "What you resist will persist. What you accept, you get the power to transform." And I think within that idea is the heart of positive change in general: the therapy, coaching, teaching, whatever you want to call it. Okay. Thank you. That's that's makes things very clear. It's like riding a bicycle too consciously, it won't work. Yeah. You have to do let your own conscious right? mind. Yeah. yeah. So you're talking about transformation here. I want to ask the last question, mm -hmm. um, which is a big loop, I think, but I'm very curious how you think about okay. it. So people start to make transformations yeah. um, uh, using hypnosis, basically, yes. to make personal changes, become wealthier, become more happier, uh, being more able to connect with other people in, mm -hmm. in great ways. So, what is the biggest transformation uh, a human being can make? Huh. Uh, who knows, you know? I think what we do know is we're having a close discussion with surface. What we're gathering now, I mean, remember, hypnosis has been in the dark ages for the longest time. Some genius would arise and develop some tool, then it would become, you know, a bad thing again, it would disappear for a while, and someone else would arise, and someone else. Yeah. So, these skills didn't accumulate very easily. It's really only the last 20 years or so that people have been sharing knowledge, growing that knowledge base, a whole different style of hypnosis starting to come together, and the standards rising and further and further. Now, of course, because we're in this changeover period, we have some very low standards, we've got some very high standards, we've got some stuff in between. Yeah. So we know we can do amazing stuff with all those ranges, but here's my belief. Whatever the higher standard is right now, I'm hoping that in the next 20 or 30 years, that becomes the low. That people look back on what we're doing right now and go, I can't believe we're still doing that. That's just so primitive. Because what, although what we have is very sophisticated, we can grow with it. And as we grow with it, we suddenly discover that what used to be impossible no longer is. A classic example is what you've been learning here in the trainer's training. It used to be considered impossible to acquire so much skill and know-how in just a few days. Right? Yes. But you've been through the experience. You've seen how quickly that been, has been turned on its head. Um, is that the end of the story? Is this it? We've just found the edge of learning? I very much doubt it. I hope that as time progresses, we find even better and even more powerful ways of doing things. Yeah. And we learn more about the brain, about people. The ceiling just expands. So the only thing that is happening is evolution. Evolution in a big way, yes. And everything is just continuing on exactly. to evolve. Okay. Exactly. Okay, thank you very much for this interview. I had a great time. Thank you. Okay. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye.